All right. So let's, so I want to do two things. One, I want to make this more concrete by actually exploring these set methods, but I think it's also kind of abstract at the moment. So I want to make it more concrete and like, why would we use a set? Like what would be the application? Um, and so here we're going to implement a class called word analysis. And what this class does is it checks which words in a file are present or not present in a dictionary. Okay. So um, we have a dictionary with a whole bunch of words in it, but we're going to parse through a file and see, okay, which words aren't in this dictionary. Okay. Um, so here is our class, public class word analysis. So I have some code and a lot of comments already for you. We'll do a few things together. Um, so let's write the main method first. We're going to do kind of like top-down style programming here. We're just going to call some methods and we'll worry about the details of how we implement those later. Um, but the first thing we want to do is we want to read the dictionary. Okay. So over here in our Explorer, there's this file called words. And this file is huge and it's got a lot of words in it. Um, many, 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 many words. Okay. So we want to read all of these. Um, efficiently. So let's, we're going to write a method and it's already down here. It's called read words. So we'll implement this in a moment, but we're going to just call it up here to read all of our dictionary words. The read words method returns a reference to a set object, which is a set of all the words in the file that we pass to it. Okay. So, um, let's create a local variable to hold on to that. So we're going to create a set of strings because those are our words. In this set, we're going to call dictionary words. And we're going to invoke the read words, read words method. Um, when we pass a path to a file in VS Code, it is relative to the folder that is opened. So we have the chapter 15 class notes folder opened in our project. So the partial path to the words file is first we have to go inside the SRC folder, and then we do a slash character, and we do the file name of words. Use the forward slash. The forward slash in Java works on all platforms, Mac, Windows, Linux, everything. Um, try not to use the backslash, because as you might remember from last year, that escapes the character, um, so it won't do what you expect. Cool. That Now we have all of the words in the dictionary, in a set. Now we're going to read um, another file. And we have different options here. Um, I downloaded the full text to War and Peace. We're not going to use that right now. Um, but I also downloaded the full text to Through the Looking Glass, um, which is by Lewis Carroll. Um, and so here's the whole full Through the Looking Glass. And I picked this because of some unique styles of Lewis Carroll, which will make this more interesting. So let's also create a set of strings. And we're going to call this the novel words, not like they're unique words, but rather um, they're from the novel. Um, and we're going to call read words again. And the partial path to this is source slash through the looking glass dot txt. I don't know why I put a txt extension on the novels and not on the dictionary, but I didn't. So. There are three, so we don't know how these sets are created yet. We'll implement the read words method later. That's fine. Um, but there are three things we want to do now that we have our dictionary set and the novel set. So three tasks. First task, print all the words that are in the novel, but not the dictionary. So this is going to highlight one of the methods that we can call on a set, uh, which is super common. Um, well, to do this, we have to iterate through all of the words um, that are in the novel. And, and as long as we check them all, we don't care about the order. So this is like screaming hash set, hash set to us. Um, but when we want to iterate through all of the elements in a set, uh, the enhanced for loop works great. So the enhanced for loop 
works with sets. Yay. So we can just say for word in novel words. And then for each word in the novel, we want to check is it in the dictionary or not. And if it's not in the dictionary, we'll print it out. So we'll say if not dictionary words dot I want uh, contains is a super common method we call on sets. And we takes a single parameter, which, which is the object we want to check. So in English, this line of code says, if the dictionary doesn't contain the word, print it. That's all it takes. That's pretty easy. It is a very common algorithm to basically have two sets um, and want to know if elements in one set aren't in the other. Okay, um, And this is exactly how we do it. Enhanced for loop contains method done. Um, and we'll get more into performance later, but this is extremely fast. What's that? It'll print every word in the novel that's not in the dictionary. So like, what are these made up words that Lewis Carroll is using? Which is a lot, he uses a lot of made up words. All right, second task. Actually, let's, let's make this up a little bit so we can like run this incrementally. We have two more, two more tasks to do, but let's put that on pause. Let's scroll down to the read words method and let's implement this so that we can actually like run our code step-by-step step as we complete each task. So we'll come back to tasks two and three. All right, so here's this method. This method reads all the words in a file um, and returns a set with all lowercase words. Um, and we define a word as a sequence of upper and lowercase letters. So right now it says return null so that it compiles. We're going to get rid of that. Um, and we're going to need to create a set. Whenever we need to create a set, it needs to be a conscious decision. In this case, the implementation of the set doesn't matter. Oh, I'm sorry, let me back up a step here. Two things. Um, here, I'm gonna write the line of code first and then explain it. Sets of strings, words equals new hash set. Two important things here. I got ahead of myself. We're creating a new hash set object. We're assigning it to a variable of type set. Set is the interface. Hash set implements the interface. It is best practice when we're defining our variables to define them in terms of the type of the interface and not in terms of the type of like the concrete class. The reason for that is right now today, maybe we decide a hash set is appropriate. And then our requirements change later, or we just make a mistake, and we're like, you know what? We actually need a tree set. We want to change from hash set to tree set in one line of code and not potentially hundreds of lines of code. Okay. So we always um, declare our variables as the more generic type um, that we can get away with to make it easier to change our code later. So the implementation of the set doesn't matter. Like the rest of this code doesn't care if it's a hash set or a tree set. So we're gonna store the reference in a variable of type set. Okay, so that's our best practice. We don't need to iterate through the set in sorted order. So create a hash set because it is faster. Right. 
We just need all the words. We don't care what order we iterate through them. They don't need to be sorted. So let's create a hash set because it will be considerably faster. Um, we need to read from the file. I don't think this is something we've done before. So we still use the scanner object, which may be familiar to you. So I'm going to create a new scanner called in. Unlike when we usually do a scanner and specify system.in, we're going to instead pass a reference to a file. So as the first parameter, I'm going to say new file, and I'm going to pass along the file name. That will create a new file object, pass a reference to the object to the scanner so it knows to read from that file. We do need an extra parameter because of how these files are formatted. We need to specify they're in UTF-8 formatting. So I'm going to add that as a second parameter. Um, there's a lot of stuff in a book besides words, like punctuation and, and numbers and all sorts of things. We don't care about that. So we're going to say use any character char character other than A through Z or A through Z capitalized as the limiters. So you might, when we use scanner last year, we would often, by default, the delimiters would be like white space, like spaces between words, hitting enter, stuff like that. So we want to have different delimiters. So I'm going to say in.useDelimiter is the method. And we pass a string, which is a regular expression. And our regular expression is going to be the set of characters, that's the square brackets, that's not A through Z lowercase or A through Z uppercase. And there could be one of more of them that will treat as a single delimiter. If you look at this line of code and you're like, what is that? Okay. Um, and at the same time, you're like, ooh, that looks interesting. If you go back to the linked list page in Canvas, I have an extension link to regular expressions. I think I might use regular expressions more than anything else in computer science. They just seem to pop up all the time. All right, we're going to run short on time. Oh, I was hoping to run this. All right, I guess we'll run this at the start of class tomorrow because we have like three more lines of code to write. Um, so I'm going to save this here. And I'm going to switch to my tab and I'm going to say start um, set live coding. And then I'll click on the little arrow and do my commit and push. Done. So do the same. Write a little comment, commit and push it. And we'll pick it up again uh, at the start of class tomorrow and talk more about some performance stuff.